I am Joe Daniel from JoeDanielFootball.com and the Football Coaching Podcast. And we are live and we'll be talking a little bit of route timing, wide receiver route timing with your quarterback footwork. So this is all about how to get those timing routes, those precision timing routes to be more effective by using, by timing up your footwork uh, between your quarterback and your receivers and how you can make all of that happen. So this is all kind of based off of what we do in the pistol power offense system as far as the routes and things that we're going to be talking about. We're not going to get in-depth on the routes. We're just going to talk about the timing. This will be fairly short, um, I think. Uh, we'll, we'll see, and then I'll answer any questions maybe at the end um, if we have time. Basically what we're talking about here is that your routes that you're running, um, and certain routes are timing routes. They've got to time up with the footwork of the quarterback so that the quarterback is releasing the football as the receiver uh, or even before the receiver is coming out of his break. And that's what we're going to try to make happen here. Basically, when we're looking at this, um, it's we're not R4, uh, and, and there's a lot of other passing systems that are out there. The, the thing you need to know is that like R four isn't it's very good. Trust me, and I've had Dub Maddox on our podcast before. I love it. I think it's great stuff. Um, I've read the the manual and everything. Um, the timing, the the concepts we use in the pistol power offense system can be really easily integrated with R four or probably any other decent passing system. They're not exactly what we use, but it's the same kind of concepts. You've got the rhythm and the um, so these are. These are the routes that, and I don't know the whole R4 system anymore. We used it at one point, and I don't, I don't really remember it all. Um, but it would easily integrate. Any good passing system would, would integrate here. But what we're going to do is time up these routes, or three steps and our seven steps, uh, and the routes that we're going to be running in three-step, hitch, slant, speed out. There's a fade, but that's not exactly the same thing. I mean, it is, but it's not. Just be one, two, three, bang, you've got to hit it in the right spot. Um, Five-step routes are going to be uh, the post, the curl, the deep out for us. Um, we don't have a dig. Necessarily. I mean, it's in the package. It's a tag. It's not a primary route. Deep out, um, which the timing would be somewhat similar, but that's a little bit different concept. Um, uh, the corner route uh, on a smash concept and then a post corner, uh, which I won't get too much into with that. But we basically read half field reads. Um, we, you know, we've got three receivers to a side that we're looking at. So that's... That's kind of how we're not trips like a, a back and two receivers. A lot of mirrored route concepts. Um, that's what we do in the pistol power offense system. But all of this holds true no matter what you're running. And if you want to check out the pistol power offense system, it's at pistolpoweroffense.com. Um, you can get instant access at a very low monthly rate. Cancel anytime. Um, so check it out, pistolpoweroffense.com. The, because of the fact that we're talking about the wide receiver steps have to time up with the quarterback steps it's easier to get this timing perfect if you run from under center and i know that goes against what everybody thinks um you know you got to be in gun to pass da, 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 da. Um, we throw more out of gun however if you are able to get a quarterback who has perfect essentially perfect footwork uh, and i think this is probably why for the longest time you've seen more passing um, under center you see more under center in the nfl because those are the guys who are going to be perfect they've got a career on the line if you know when we talk about this if you can get a guy who's really perfect and comfortable under center um, your timing routes are going to be better now you lose may lose something in downfield vision but again you know if you've got a guy who can really, you know, eyes down the field and all that sort of stuff, it's better. However, we throw mostly out of gun. Um, but because of the fact that you can really tie your quarterback's drops can be very, very consistent. One, two, three, four, five. And I can make that consistent. So whereas anybody who's running gun below, like, the NFL knows that those gun snaps, while they may be very good are rarely perfect every single time. And that's going to cause a little bit of a timing issue 
it's not big enough to where I say you can't do it out of gun. And like I said, we do. And pistols, the same deal. Um, guys talk about, well, we pistol from the from three yards or four yards or five yards. Like if you're a pistol that's going to run the ball all the time, pistol option type of team, um, then maybe three yards is okay. We need to be at four, four and a half um, at pistol for, for it to really be effective. For us, because we're still going to be a balanced offense out of it, um, and within the pistol power offense system. So, to, so as I talk about all this, know that with the quarterback, we've found that the snap time is about two steps, equivalent of the first two steps of a three-step or a five-step drop. So that's where that's going to be accounted for if you're running um, from gun or from pistol. So here's how these routes time out and how they work. And let's start with a, what was this out? Let's start with a, we'll just go with a Pro 2. Um, and I'm just using PowerPoint, nothing special. I always gotta ask that. Kind of one of our base passing formations. Okay. Um, and we're not going to worry about coverage right now. We're just timing the routes up. And obviously, press coverage and press releases, they change some of what you do. Uh, if we are going to run a hitch, a simple hitch, hitch is a three step route. So the hitch. Not gonna be that precision. First of all, the hitch for the quarterback is gonna be one, two, three, and release. And he should be dropping straight back. But this is a bamboo tablet. I mean, you know, what I'm drawing on, uh, not, not that easy. Um, R is coming down to protect. So as he takes that three-step drop, if he releases the ball on the third step, and, and three-step is a lot of pre-snap, you know, I've got a corner sitting 10 yards off, I know I can throw this hitch right now. In order for the route to time up, I need this receiver to run one, two, three, four, five, and back to the quarterback. Uh, and that, what you'll find when you time that, and in order to look at this and to see if it's working, you want to stand, coach, Coach wants to stand right here so that you can see what the quarterback is seeing as he's releasing this football. And he should be seeing the back of this receiver's helmet as he releases that football. Okay, He should be seeing the back of that receiver's helmet as he releases the football. And Coach wants to stand right over here. And I got a ton of this from Bill Mountjoy, um, who does a fantastic job uh, and has done a fantastic job putting this offense together. And I've done a good job of stealing most of it. Um, and we're running probably even more, we're more Mount Joy, East Coast offense, as he calls it, uh, than we've probably ever been, um, even in, in recent years. Uh, and so if you're going to time the hitch up, three-step drop, the break should happen at five. If we don't run a speed out, if we were going to run a speed out out there, it would be at five as well. We played with the slant. Slant is another three-step concept. Fade is a three-step concept, but again, it's one, two, three, and you're throwing it kind of to a spot 22 yards down the field outside. Um, we found that the slant did time up really well. We've always done it as a one, two, three, and 45. Um, and so what you're really throwing is you're throwing it as he breaks. Um, we did find that the timing was really good when we made this a five step. Uh, it really helped us get, you know, in a, in a situation where the corner is man or one-on-one, -on -one, uh, it really helped us throw this thing in a spot where the corner didn't have time to drive on the slant. What it didn't like so much was that that depth uh, let us kind of end up with the strong safety or the free or, you know, strong safety or outside backer in a position to really hammer it. I don't like the slant 
very much against anything other than man coverage. Um, and I like... If I, I love the timing of this route. We don't throw a ton of slant. We never have. Um, we throw it more in seven on seven because we get a lot of two man type stuff. Uh, but you know, I would like it with a five step and a three step against man double slant. I might like that because that's going to pull this OLB here. It's going to break before the corner has a chance to drive on it. We'll be able to hit it right there. Um, I don't like the slant with the three step or the one step because it comes in so fast. Now the one step catch and throw, if you know that it's there, I think it's a little bit better. Uh, but that's how the five step routes time up. Now let's check. Always fun stuff in the chat box here. Um, if you're running a five step route. Now, five step is going to have not only your pre snap read, but also your post snap read. Your five step routes are going to have a, and the coach wants to stay in the same spot and see how this all breaks. You, you want to, that's where you want to be is at that angle. Um, it's hard to see from behind, from directly behind if the route's timing up like you want it to. Um, you can see it on film, obviously, but on the field or during practice, you'll see it better in this situation. So, I'm going to end up with a black. So now our quarterback, one, two, three, four, five, okay? And I'm not quarterback guru, like quick to, I don't know, five step. Like we've got to, you know, my head coach is a quarterback guy. He handles that. Uh, I worry about the concepts and I worry about the timing. Um, and I, I know enough about quarterback to know when it's wrong. Um, but like quick fives and hitches and all that sort of stuff, uh, that's not my department. Um, not yet. Someday maybe I'll get really good at all that stuff too. So... Now let's time it up with probably one of my favorite routes, which is the curl route. And the curl for us is, there's two ways to run the curl. One is to run it, first of all, five-step drop in order to get it to time up so that the ball is releasing. Uh, you're gonna time, and, and there's, we can get into, you know, ball gets there on 1.8, 2.1, uh, all that sort of stuff. That's really, you know, that's a goal in high school. You wanna be as fast as you can. Um, it's worth looking at, um, but if we're taking a five-step drop, that's going to be a seven-step vertical stem before he breaks. So the break should be happening, and a seven-step should be happening around 10 yards, um, around 10 yards. And then what we teach is a nine-step curl. Um, so a nine-step curl means one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, two short, and then drive back to the quarterback, okay? Teach that right now, that's what we're doing. Um, in the past, I taught one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then get into the window here. And we'd be looking for the window where, again, we're running this as a curl flat concept. I get that weak safety driving out. Um, I get that if we were running with the R to that side, I'd be getting my wheel backer sitting on the hook, and I want him to come in and find that window. So two different ways to run it. Um, but basically seven-step vertical, and then get into the window, be seen. Uh, and we've got a shoot route, which is uh, getting width, uh, and we read it inside out. We would, we would read it on the check release by the R to the curl, to the shoot. So five step concept passing times up with a seven step route stem. And that's pretty universal. Um, that's pretty universal. Our deep out. Is going to time up the same. We 
we're going to get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And again, it's a straight stem. I just can't draw a straight line with this thing. Uh, eight step is coming across, and the deep out should break at ten, and then end up at twelve. It's more of a speed cut than a than a sharp cut, um, and that's our deep out. But it's again at seven. He should be releasing the football so that when we release the football, he's about right here. And so that as the ball is released, he hasn't even broken yet. And that's how you create the separation from the defensive back. I think one of the things that you do to create separation is you build it into your system. Um, post, same thing. Okay, post out concept. Again, all of this is inside of our Pistol Power Offense system. You can go to pistolpoweroffense.com and get instant access. Learn all about it. Just check it out, pistolpoweroffense.com. You can get um, instant access, get access to everything for a very low monthly rate, uh, and it's no contract, cancel any time. Uh, check it out at Pistol Power Offense system. We would go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in a straight line, preferably. The break is happening around 10 to 12 yards, and then he's breaking. And what we want to see is, again, that break happening and it's going to be the same deal where that um seventh step with it being an inside breaking route is slightly different but that seventh step um as he hits on that now he's driving to the post uh we want this to be a sharp so it's probably it's going to have a just like the curl it's really going to be a nine step post to be one two three four five six seven eight nine post um if we can do that or we can roll it over uh, i don't know i don't, I don't decide exactly you know how sharp does the cut need to be um can he just speed cut this and ends up being like a you know i think there's a couple different ways to do it uh, but the key is i want to throw it right here so that, that corner does not have time Ugh. that corner over top thinking it's thinking it's a go route doesn't have time to drive on it right now now obviously i need a free safety not be sitting here for this but this ball should be thrown well before it gets into the free safety uh, if we're reading it right, if we're doing it right. So, yeah, curl deep out corners, the same deal, seven steps, break it to the corner. Um, so that's what we're doing with our route timing, and that's, that's what I think you can really do with your route timing um, to kind of time it up, get some ideas. The other thing is don't take what I said or what I say, or what Bill Mountjoy says, or what you hear in any clinic or anywhere. Um, it's just like in the video where we talked about uh, running back timing, which is on my YouTube channel, joedanielfootball.com slash YouTube to check that out. You know, we talked about you've got to go out there and you've got to experiment um, and you've got to figure out exactly what works best for your guys, um, what does best for them. If you go out there and you've got legit D1, six foot five Calvin Johnson, Greek God standing out there at X, and you've got regular old high school, five foot nine, four nine forty cat sitting out at Z, their routes will not time up the same. <laughs> they will not be exactly the same. You may not get the same depth that you want. You may not get the same reactions that you want. So don't be afraid. Now, ultimately, adjust the receivers. Get the quarterback consistent. You want the quarterback to be one, two, three, four, five. Whatever it is that he does, consistent. Adjust the receivers. And again, adjust each one individually. So don't you know sit there and say, hey, on a post, we're doing seven. You know, each route has different stuff. But don't say, hey, on a post, uh, you know, it's seven unless it's a little windy and then it needs to be eight and a half because that's gonna be different and you can't do all that. Um, but you can take a very talented uh, receiver and adjust his steps. You can take a less talented receiver and adjust his steps or a smaller receiver so that they end up timing up correctly. A lot of guys say, well, your quarterback needs reps with his receivers. I agree with that, but I want his post or his curl or his corner to be the same spot wise whether he's throwing it to the stud or the high school program kid and so i want to adjust those receivers 
to get it right. Now, I'm not going to have time to work with it. I may not have time to adjust every single receiver, um, but I can get the ones that play. Uh, all right. If you have anything you want to put in the comments here, I'll take a couple seconds to look at some questions um, or post it in the chat. And let's see. Go on here. Okay. All right. Uh, Jordan says, great video coach. Love watching your videos. And I appreciate that. Want to be a coach after school? Watching these has helped you gain knowledge. I appreciate that, Jordan. Thank you very much. And I hope that you will go with coaching. I think one of the hardest things we're going to have right now is finding enough coaches who want to do this because actually, I take that back. There's plenty of guys who are going to be in Jordan's shoes. And you guys that are coaching right now understand this. There's plenty of guys who are going to come in at 21, 22, 23, want to be a football coach. And there's not enough that will stick with it because it's freaking hard. Um, it's not, the kids don't do everything that you want them to do. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, it's not what you think it was. Um, it's not like everybody does exactly what they're supposed to do when you play X's and O's and stuff. It's a lot of working with humans um, and sometimes humans who are a, a little hormony um, and, and, you know, got things going on in their lives and, and, and don't just come out to play football all day uh, and have parents and, and bad grades and whatever else. So, I uh, appreciate that. Scott says, how do you work with a shorter quarterback who is shorter than the line getting better timing with his receivers? Um, I would move his launch point, number one. I would, obviously you can't always move, you can't move his launch point every single play, but I would adjust his launch point. I would get him on half rolls. I would get him on sprint outs. Um, but I think that if you have, if you're throwing lanes, he can, he can get better by pre-snap. Um, by pre-snap looking and seeing and saying, hey, this is where this thing is going to happen. Uh, you know, it's cover three. I'm running curl flat. All right. This curl, if I got a clear vision to it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, you know, throw the curl. I'm going to check the, check the hook, throw the curl if I see a clear vision to it. And if I don't, I'm going to the flat. And what I've found is the flat is usually open enough that you can throw it in a spot where, um, where you can get to it. And that's like, for example, in the curl route. What I would say is, number one, if you've got a short quarterback who can't see very well, go very simple. A cover three con. Like, if I'm playing a cover three team, I'm running curl. Like, I'm running curl. And I'm getting him great at time. If I'm running... Uh, 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 you know, a cover two team, I'm running smash. And he's knowing that, hey, I'm going to check the, the uh, you know, the nice thing about the corner is you don't have to worry about hitting somebody throwing your passing lane. Um, but I'm checking, you know, is the smash open? If it's not, I'm checking down to the hitch. Hitch should be there. If nobody's underneath the, the smash or the corner, then I should be throwing the hitch. I would give him very limited passing concepts. If you have a quarterback who has trouble seeing, give him very, very limited passing concepts so that he can learn without actually visually seeing it perfectly. He should still be able to get a feel for it. But without actually being able to visually see everything perfectly, I know where everyone should be. And when he masters the curl, I go on. Curl's my favorite cover three route. As he masters the curl, I go on to you know, the next thing, the next thing, deep out. Um, deep out's another cover three. Um, Poco is a, is a man in the cover two beater. I start with smash and I go to Poco. Uh, within the pistol power offense system, that's what we use. So that's what I would look at, um, Scott, with that. All right. Uh, let's see here. A couple other chat, a couple other things in the chat. Uh, appreciate your time. Uh, David says he's a high school defensive coordinator and runs some of our 33 stuff. Awesome. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, we have the 33 stack defensive system as a part of JDFB insiders um, and really meshes with the 425 system, the 33 system, the 34 system are all. Uh, so I appreciate that very much. All right, guys, um, I appreciate it. If you have anything you want to ask about, post it down in the comments and also like and share this video if it's been helpful to you if you know somebody else who would enjoy it please share it uh like it if it's been helpful to you and i appreciate your time 
Uh, Jason says best cover two beater. Cover two beater, like I just said, smash concept. Um, smash concept, best cover two beater there is. Vertical stretch for me. Um, we're mirrored routes. I uh, like it, love it. Stick with that. Um, it also gets, you know, the way that we run it, we get a guy going down the middle of the field too that can be there. Uh, do you think bad... Uh, Chin says, do you think bad offensive line affects route timing and route combination? Yeah, I mean, it has to. Um, if you have a bad offensive line, you may not be able to run five-step concepts. You know, I mean, we're talking bad, right? I'm, I'm assuming we're talking bad. Because um, three-step, I can just cut, right? Three-step, I can cut or quick set. Um, three-step, I should be able to get the ball out. If we're in gun, it's catch and throw. I should be able to run my three-step concepts. I should be able to run hitches. Uh, I should be able to run looks to the outside. I should be able to run um, slants. I love slants, but if I if all I can throw is three-step, you know, a slant is a is a perfectly capable again get great at it, perfectly capable um, concept as a cover three beater. So is hitch. Um, up is up. Uh, four verts is a potential cover two beater even. Um, gives you something to go with. Slant is a potential really a good cover two beater. Um, I'd probably have to tag some stuff. Um, so I might run four verts with an out. It might be something to do. Um, gotta run the ball. So. Um, yeah, it's definitely going to affect you. I mean, there's no way around it. Like, And you can sprint out. Cut it down to half field reads if you got a quarterback who can get out there and change the launch point but with a bad offensive line i mean yeah it's definitely it's a it's a huge problem um and it's the first one you need to address it's, it's absolutely the first thing you need to address because you're not going to get the same route timing if you've got hands in your face um you want to like i said before with short quarterbacks it's the same with with poor protection he's not going to get a good look i need him to be confident and stand in there so i need him to know where everybody's going to be so I need to run simple route concepts where he is going to know where everyone's going to be, even though there's people in his face, and get rid of the football on time. I think if you get rid of the football on time, it will negate a lot of your offensive line problems. Um, so far this year, our quarterback, for the most part, has done a good job of getting the ball out quickly, and it, is, it has helped us as our offensive line has had to improve on our pass protection. Our pass protection last year was non-existent. We we're getting better as this year goes on, but it's certainly helping when our quarterback gets the ball out quickly. Um, and it's because I think he has a good understanding of our system right now. We haven't, we haven't given him a ton of stuff to learn. All right, last one. For man coverage in a 33 stack versus doubles, what levels do the strong safety and corner play at? Depends on if you want to run press or off. Um, and if you're running cover one or, or cover zero. I usually play cover one um against two by two in the 33 stack and i like press coverage now if your guys aren't used to playing press coverage they can get beat quickly if you teach them to be very good at press coverage then it's very good uh, it's about how much time you're willing to put into it if i'm playing press coverage with my uh corners then i play my olbs or or um song safety weak safety at seven yards off the receiver um, that I've found, that's my, that's my off man level. Off man is probably six to eight. So, I mean, if you're going to play off man, I might play six and eight, six on the corners, eight on the safeties. Um, and I, cause I don't, I do have help inside, so I could go eight and six, but you know, it seems like a quick hitch is a really easy thing to throw there. Um, but yeah, six to eight is, and remember it's off the receiver. Very important. It's not up to, a lot of guys get caught up in this. Um, so if everybody can probably play seven yards off the receiver, right? If we're two by two, because one of the receivers is a yard or two yards off the ball, and the other one's on the ball. So if we're all playing seven yards off man coverage, or even six, and it, and some of it comes down to your talent level. If you play six off, um, and you're not worried about getting run by. Everybody can play six off because you know one guy's two yards off the ball. So we're actually leveled off in that way. Uh, but I like to press the outside guys. But but when we play press coverage, we play a lot of press coverage. Uh, and so it, it's something we get very good at. 
All right, guys, appreciate your time. Appreciate you watching. And uh, let's see, one more. Trying to avoid that lame duck youth football pass that always seems to hang forever. My question is whether I should attempt a flat concept. To the wide side seems like a far pass, like, like a long pass. Um, although it all depends on how far you're throwing it. But if you can throw it, I'd look at, can you, can you throw a hitch? How far off will they play you? Um, can you just throw a simple hitch? Um, and if you can't, can you throw a slant, fat, uh, slant flat? Um, or can you throw a um, up, uh, uh, a bench concept where you've got a go and an out? which is basically you know, like a five-yard out, um, that might be something you could throw um, with third graders. I, I can always help people with third graders with, with like seven, eight, nine-year-old run game. Um, there's so much variation in the passing because you've got some kids that can throw and some kids that can't. So, um, you know, at that level, it's, some kids can hold a football and some can't. Uh, so it's hard to say, but I would experiment with it. I would probably try to throw mostly to the short side, but I would experiment with it. All right, guys, thank you very much. Appreciate it. I've hung on longer than I can because I love doing this stuff, and I hope that it's been helpful to you. Uh, thank you for watching. Please like and share. Check out JoeDanielFootball.com, and also check out the Pistol Power Offense system. Go to PistolPowerOffense.com to get all the details on that. Uh, you can also get access to all of our systems in one simple step uh, by going to JoeDanielFootball.com and clicking on the Join button at the top. Tons of stuff in there for you. All of our uh, different coaching systems there, uh, they all intertwine together. So check it out. Thanks for watching. Uh, and remember, Coach Simple, play fast, win.